and here I am going to show you how I finish a painting on a piece of paper that I it's a 9 by 12 uh, watercolor paper that I had um, uh, some background colors on they have a couple of layers of paint on it and in this video I'm going to show you in real time how to finish the painting um, I will fast through some sections where I'm dry um, using a heat gun to dry the paintings but other than that it is on real time so grab a cup of coffee and um, sit down and watch or you can paint along with me um, if you have a piece of paper that already has paint on it um, and I will try to narrate my thought process so the color that I'm using here is um, it's a orange color that I have mixed um, and I think it has um, pink magenta and Indian yellow with a little bit of um, um, white and um, cad yellow mixed in it. It's a nice shade of orange. I have noticed that I like to mix my own colors versus um, what comes out of the bottle straight. So, and here I'm using a skewer. It has lots of layers of paint on it, so it's a little thick. But I'm putting marks on it. Um, just scratching paper, creating texture lines that will show through. It might show through, might not show through, but it just adds interest to the painting. Here I have, I'm using the same brush that I had the orange color on and I'm using a neutral gray, mixing it, uh, making some neutral colors in between. Um, that just brings out the other colors, uh, makes the other colors pop up a little more when you add a neutral um, colors to, next to a bright and vibrant color. So as I paint along, I'm also trying to see how I can balance the color on the painting. Um, and this is a brush. It's a scruffy little brush, but it leaves a delicious texture when used um, for mark making. It's just, it gives me a good splatter of color that I can work with later on. And the colors that I am using in this one, it's um, um, fluorescent magenta and white. that gives that soft pink color. See how that pink brings out the the neutral brings out the pink, bright pink. paint here um, and it's speeded up a little bit um, and the color that I am using now it's um, sap green and uh, bringing in some cool colors in to 
tone down the bright warm colors um, I like using colors in layers quite a bit my paintings have lots of layers of color on them um, and this little bit of um, direct sap green without the white in it that gives it that dark effect the black with the dots <clears throat> you see on the top it's from a prior painting I had I was not happy with the painting so I'm painting over it and then I used a lot of other colors to um, get rid of the other painting and put in more colors that I was um, uh, attracted to which is usually the colors of the flowers that grow in my garden I'm using um, paints gray here again the brand is golden and a little bit of white along with halo blue um, I usually um, don't clean my brushes between different colors because um, it helps me um, harmonize the colors a little bit when I have a little bit of each color in on the paintbrush and it also gives a surprise effect um, an unexpected effect I'm using a skewer um, it's a barbecue skewer a wooden skewer just to put texture and marks on the paper and by scratching out the paint it also brings out the lower layers that I had painted over and that just makes it very um, interesting because if I tried to do that with the paintbrush it would not necessarily have that effect here I'm using teal uh, with paints gray and thalo blue it's thalo blue green shade um, that's the one I like I, I somehow I don't like the red um, shade of thalo blue so it's how interesting how our, our eyes um, get attracted to certain shades of color and me for most part um, these are the colors that I'm seeing right now in my garden um, since the COVID I have been spending a lot of time in I've had a lot of time in the evenings and um, to do some gardening and um, get some quiet time to and it gets reflected in my garden I have um, it's blooming right now and um, my garden is not planned out it's a wild one <laughs> I love planting wild flowers and flowers of all different shades and together um, I like uh, putting tall versus long, um, short so they kind of um, gets it's like my paintings too um, they get reflected in my garden as well again I'm toning down a little bit of uh, mark making that I had done to bring in um, some more resting areas
as you can see um, a little bit of um, the blue is coming through on the orange and the pink that I'm using I also have um, Indian yellow that's another of my favorite colors that invariably shows up in my paintings That's um, a, it's a little jar of colors that I have put in blues and blacks and all um, kinds of shades of green and so it kind of made an interesting black color. Um, so it's not straight carbon black, but it's a. Uh, You can't see it here, but um, it has a different tone to it versus this flat black color. When you put light dark against the light, it brings out the light a little more. So um, that's why I like using dark colors. Like you can see from my water, it's not straight black. It's it's got a little bit of blue in it too. Um, going over the same marks I had done with orange with the light pink. It um, kind of um, gives a um, depth and layers to the marks, makes them look more like um, poppies. And I love poppies. And what I'm using is at the back of the brush, I'm just putting some dots that are dipped into the white. Again, light against dark brings out the light and enhances the dark. Again, I'm looking for a paintbrush <laughs> over here. Um, so, uh, here, drawing. That's what I was looking for, my heat gun. Usually I work with two or three paintings and I don't use heat gun because um, it gives up a little bit of fume. Um, but because I was recording, I used the heat gun to dry out the paint and I can use um, different um, blending techniques that um, I'm going to be doing now. So, um, I'm going to tone down a little bit of the color now a little bit by making them little flat, um, you know, 
bringing out more colors and um, pushing back some of the mark mix um, that I did. Um, you can still see some of the marks um, after I'm done, you'll see that. But um, this using gray to neutralize the colors over there a little bit. You know, I didn't like gray when I first started painting, nor black. Now I think gray is a great color because it um, enhances the other colors quite a bit. Um, And I use black quite a bit too in my paintings. When you have two colors on a paintbrush, it kind of gives a nice effect, like you saw at the bottom. Um, it's an unintentional marks that um, makes the painting interesting to me. And you might ask, when do I know when a painting is done? When I'm, when it's, I have set an intention when I start a painting of what the feeling I want the painting to convey. And when I get that in the painting, I know it's done. I know it's a little subjective, but um, that's the best uh, explanation I can give when I think a painting is done. I'm using a thick brush now to um, again keep uh, put some resting areas in the painting and usually I like to put resting areas um, resting areas what I mean is when you have a lot of things going on in a painting um, it's always nice to have go back to that area to rest your eyes and then you can go look for other things um, so I usually do that and I don't mind see that blue came through I'll just work with it 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 doesn't ruin a painting for me it's just something that I just work it in and I bring it out in the other side um, So usually my paintings have resting areas uh, towards the top of the painting. Um, I put little white marks on them too. Um, that's more of my um, the way I like it. I like white on white colors. Um, This is almost coming together. I'm 
trying to decide what to do next. Um, I need to, uh, I need a paintbrush that has an edge to it. And I couldn't find it in that pile of paintbrushes that I had. So it took me a little while to find it. Um, got it. It's that um, edge brush. See that? I love that brush because it gives a nice line um, when painting. See those white on white marks I was telling about? I like those a lot. So you will see that in my paintings quite a bit. And if you want, um, I mean, this is at uh, the actual um, full length um, of the video. You can always go to the bottom and um, speed up the painting as you wish. Um, I think um, on YouTube you go at the bottom and you can um, speed up the speed of the painting as you go along. Um, and I um, hope you're enjoying your coffee <laughs> um, and have time and maybe you're painting along with me that would be great this is a little p brush that I had um, which I forgot to put it in water. It's a, got a very fine tip and I forgot to put it in water so it's a stiff. It's dried up paint and um, I still like using it because it gives me uh, little marks that I can leave on the painting which are different um, than um, and I'm cutting back some of the marks that I just made by different shades of uh, pink. Towards the end of the painting, it is more of a thinking process of where I want to be to the marks. Um, because now I'm trying to make sure that the painting is balanced and I'm happy with the composition. Um, By going over with that um, blue over the pink, it gives me this nice lilac purplish color in there, which is just gorgeous.
these um, blue lupines I love the lupines that um, or lupines or I don't know how you say it but I love those flowers they are native of, um, um, of uh, Pacific Northwest and they we have quite a bit of them on Mount Rainier in the valleys um, the meadows wildflowers near Mount Rainier and they are just so gorgeous Again, I'm using that scruffy brush I had um, to create my poppies um, like shape. And blue and orange together look so gorgeous together. It's a perfect combination in my eyes. I'm just giving us um, that color at different places um, just so that it's not something that stands out just for the flowers but it's part of the painting too again drying it up before I put um, some final touches to the painting. It's a china marker and I like doing these scribbles on my paintings. Um, it's one of the things that I like. It makes it more I do that in my large paintings too. You know, when I do paintings that are um, six feet by um, five feet or six feet by six feet. Um, I have these marks on my paintings and those as well. So they're consistent. But lately I have been liking working on small intimate paintings. So um, that's why there have been a lot of um, small paintings that I've been doing. This is a toothpick that I just took it out of, and I'm just um, scraping back some color um, and bringing out the layers that were there underneath. In my larger paintings, if I'm working on wood, I use a cookie scraper to scrape out large sections of the painting. Um, or a paint stripper that I can get from a, a paint store. What I'm doing is I'm going to um, put in some lines, white lines with a thin brush that 
gives the painting a little bit of structure. Um, and I, like I said, I like that brush to um, do thin lines, straight lines. Well, they're not straight, but they don't need to be straight. Um, so if you like this video, um, please subscribe to my channel so that you get uh, notified uh, next time I drop a video in and um, hit the like button. Um, and um, I will be dropping in a couple more videos as um, I have quite a few recorded. I just need to get them all um, um, edited for um, narration. Um, so if you like, um, um, follow me along. I also have an Instagram account um, and um, I put in all my new paintings on the Instagram. It's called Rena Patel Artist on Instagram and um, come check uh, check out my art over there as well if you have have not seen my art um, uh, my Instagram account so again this um, is done and I love it what do you think leave your comments thank you